Welcome to another audio newsletter presented by me, Richard, and Sarah. This newsletter starts with a message from our chair, Scott Davidson, speaking about some unsurprising results from the Nat Road annual survey that was undertaken last month. In the survey, 90% of Nat Road members said they had no plans to buy an electric vehicle. Australia is substantially behind Europe in its uptake of EVs, with the relatively longer distances, shortage of recharging stations, and the absence of a market presenting major hurdles to anyone that did want to make the switch. This will change when governments provide incentives that lower EV prices and provide a regulatory basis for their efficient and safe operation. There are obviously lots of more immediate concerns and the challenges will keep coming. But Mr. Davidson wanted to remind members that we shouldn't take our collective eyes off the ball because the changeover to EVs is going to start moving very fast. A quick reminder to our members that the board election, which you would have already been emailed about, closes on Friday the 5th of August at 5pm. If you haven't cast your vote yet, get in quick. And if you have any questions about the election, contact Nat Road at 02 6295 Thanks, Sarah. A story that featured in our newsletter this fortnight was take note of new family and domestic violence leave provisions. This article said employers should note that casual workers will have the same entitlement to paid domestic leave as full-time and permanent workers under legislation introduced in federal parliament recently. The government has determined the scheme will commence on the 1st of February 2023 for most employees. But small businesses will have an extra six months to adjust to the change, meaning the scheme will be fully operational by August next year. The new law will give more than 11 million Australian workers access to 10 days of paid family and domestic violence leave at their full rate of pay each year. Another story of our newsletter, Time to Crank Up Port Reform, highlights that Natroad is calling out the issue of soaring fines on truck operators to a New South Wales government review. Natroad has said that a national re-examination of the way ports operate is needed, advocating strongly for incentives rather than penalties to deal with landside inefficiencies. Lower port charges for high productivity vehicles are more sensible than hitting them with a long vehicle fee. Access to and from ports needs a fresh approach. NatRed is hopeful a pending Productivity Commission report due in draft this month will shine a light on much needed reforms. Yes, now more on workplace relations. NatRed has told a Commonwealth inquiry that complex workplace relations laws act as a deterrent to small businesses taking on new employees. This is in another story featured in our newsletter. NatRed has told a review of the amendments to casual employment arrangements in the Fair Work Amendment Act 2021, that the current legislation is working well. Elements like having a dual safety net, both the national employment standards and the large number of detailed awards are confusing small business. This is especially the case in road transport where half of all participants are self-employed owner drivers. More information from the Nat Road Commission National Re Research found that seven in 10 Australians would wait longer for goods, accept less variety or pay more if it resulted in improvements to the environment. Metropolitan residents are more likely to accept trade-offs at 71% than regional residents at 62%. Of the 58% of Australians who are aware of night and morning cur delivery curfews, six in 10 would support their removal if it improved the movement of goods. The last article from this fortnight's newsletter was about employee truck drivers' reasonable travel and meal expense amounts for the 2022-2023 financial year, which have now been published. Reasonable amounts are given for breakfast, lunch and dinner. The amounts are all for domestic travel destinations. The relevant amounts are breakfast 2680, lunch 3060 and dinner 5275 and stay separate. They can they, they cannot be combined into a single daily amount due to the importance of days on which the travel commences and ends, when some meals may not be deductible because they are not consumed in the course of work travel. It's a really critical test. A driver's work diary can be used to demonstrate when meal breaks were taken because em employee truck drivers must take meal breaks at different times of the day when compared with other taxpayers. It should also be noted that amounts cannot be moved from one meal to another or excess funds carried over to a later meal. 
if you would like any further information on the articles mentioned today, please do not hesitate to contact the NatRoad team at info at natroad.com.au or visit our website in the coming week as these are uploaded to the news page. And as always, we'd like to thank our partner sponsor for this newsletter, TallyTrack, NavMath.